Let's look. Okay, so really where we are. Um, let's see if we do this now. No, sorry, I'm actually, we're, we're, we're actually much further down the line. Yes. Okay, it's okay. Alison's telling us. One more story. My daughter lost um, a ring of mine that I had had since I was young this week, talking about brachas. She searched everywhere. She was so nervous not to tell me. She said she said that bracha. And, and put money in Rabbi Mabana's. Okay. Literally, it found it. Okay. So That's did you all hear that? That this is a Rabbi Mabana's miracle. Um, that um, Ella, one of Alison's daughters. <laughs> we can't get too anonymous here. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, lost her ring that she had had since a little girl, and she put her money into Rabbi Meir Balanes, made her declaration, and the ring appeared. And well, and, and can I tell you, last week I thought I lost my passport. And I put money into Rabbi Meir Balanes, and it was in exactly the patch that I went. I would just went back upstairs to look again, and it was there. <laughs> I was like, oh, you looked here. Where was it when you looked the first time? And I think, okay, we'll do it in, relaxed, in a relaxed way. So when we're talking about the 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 eve, the, the nighttime shema, okay, so Rabbi Tversky teaches us that just as in the morning, there are two brachas preceding the shema, one, one, about, one about the wonders of nature and one about the love of Torah. So are there two similar brachas in the evening. However, in the evening, an additional bracha, Hashiveni, is added after the Shema, which says, lay us down, Hashem, our God, in peace. And the bracha continues by asking Hashem to protect us from various sources of harm. The Arizal version <clears throat> reads lay us down our father in peace and it appears to be a bit rash to ask the master of the universe to tuck you into bed but it's more acceptable for a father to tuck his children into bed right what an incredible thought it was noted in the morning shema that the sages were insistent that the way we say brachas of redemption close close to the Amida. yet in the evening we insert Hashivenu after the bracha of redemption before the Amida. and the Talmud tells us then as much as the sages formulated Hashivani Hashkiveni it is considered to be an extension of the redemption bracha but in what way can this be considered an extension of the redemption so <coughs> Rabbi Tversky brings down the Shvili Lehaleket, and he quotes, and it says that this bracha was said by the Israelites on the preceding night of Yetzirah Mitzrayim, the night before leaving Egypt, when Hashem smote the Egyptian firstborn, and Moshe said, you shall not leave the entrance of the house until morning. Thinking themselves to be in danger, they said this prayer for protection, in as much as it originated with the Yitzhak Mitzrayim. So it doesn't just happen. It is considered an extension of the bracha of our redemption. Okay. So the bracha says that we remove Satan from before us and behind us. And it is understood that we ask Hashem to remove the Satan from in front of us because he stands in the way of our doing mitzvahs. That's what the Yitzhak comes and does. He wants to get us off track before he stands in the way of our doing mitzvahs. But what is meant behind us? So the commentaries explain that sometimes the Yetzirah, the Satan, stands behind us and pushes us to exhaust ourselves doing a mitzvah so that our energy will be depleted and we will be unable to do more mitzvahs. OK, so he doesn't leave off. He does not let go. He's here, he's there, he's everywhere, wherever you think he isn't, he is, wherever you think he is, he's there twice, okay? And the Chofetz Chaim used to come into the base Medrash late at night and tell the bathroom to go to bed. It, it is not the Yetzir Tov that wants you to stay up late learning. It is the Yetzir Hara that wants you to go without enough sleep so that you will not be able to concentrate on your learning tomorrow. Isn't that amazing? Okay, and then there's probably a lot of the things, and Yolanda's smiling at that one. So it's like, because it actually, uh, I have a friend that I speak to in Israel, mostly at night. 
And by me, it's already 12 o'clock. <laughs> and she always says like, I don't know why I just can't go to bed early. <laughs> I'll say, well, me too, but there's so much to get done. But actually, it could be that we actually fool ourselves into this. We need to be alert to the Yetzirah. We close with the bracha saying, Baruch atah Hashem, Shomer Amo Yisrael. Blessed are you, Hashem, who protects his people forever. On a Friday night, the conclusion is, blessed are you, Hashem, who spreads the shelter peace upon us, upon his people, Israel, and upon your shalim. During the week, we are subject to injury by negative spiritual sport forces, and we ask Hashem for protection. On Shabbos, we do not ask for the special protection, because Shabbos itself, no, keeping Shabbos itself, okay, it's not just Shabbos being there, but keeping Shabbos itself, is certainly the greatest protection. And we often refer to Shabbos as a person who keeps Shabbos is a Shomer Shabbos. Okay, who Shomer Shabbat. She, he Shomer Shabbat. They, they keep the Shabbos. But in reality, it has been wisely said that more than Jews have guarded the Shabbos, the Shabbos has guarded the Jews. And we ask that question many times. And we all need. Um, um we people people find ways that this is just let me silly you know <laughs> yeah at least there's some people keeping shabbos which is true at least there's some people keeping shabbos so the chafetz chaim said that if a if a, um, a shabbos is recognized as the ultimate in kedusha in some ways even surpassing yom kippur the chafetz chaim said that if a proprietor closes his store there's always the possibility that he will reopen it as long as his sign remains on the store. If the sign is removed, you know that the store is closed forever. Shabbos is a sign between man and his children of man and the children of Israel. It is a sign forever. If a person deviates from full observance of Shabbos, it is likely that he will return as long as the sign of Shabbos is observed, is always there. And Shabbos is really the protector of all of our Yiddishkeit. And, um, you know, I would tell people, and I will say, that the fact that we had in our house, nobody kept Shabbos. Kashrus wasn't there, but there was candles, Yiddish, and challah. Every Shabbos. Even when we went on holiday in Israel. I mean, Israel, in Cape Town. Even when we went to Cape Town, and we still, Friday night was still, and we weren't allowed out on Friday nights. We went to allow dating. If anybody wanted to take you on a date on Friday night, they were welcome to come to Granny for supper. But nobody would dare do such a thing like that because you had the uncles and everybody there. So you'd wait until Matzah Shabbos. I have to say that after my grandfather passed away, that was that was it. Oh, I need to bring them on now. That was it, right? Um, that was the end of Friday nights. And you can see the change in the generations as well. Um, but that's where we are. And today, you know, it used to be when we were growing up in South Africa, everybody knew, everybody knew how to make Kiddush. Your grandparents made Kiddush right in us, didn't matter what it was. But as things changed, so my, my sister and I happened to be where there were family members, and we're going back 21, oh my gosh, yeah, 21 years. February was 21 years. And we went to visit my grandmother in Cape Town, and we both had our babies. RMC was six months old, so that's how I remember that. And um, maybe September, whatever, five months. And no, six. And um, there was some outside family members who came for Friday night dinner. So the one person offered, they asked him to make Kiddush. Um, anyway, it was, my sister and I had already made Kiddush before and Hamwait, so we knew to do that before everybody arrived. But this guy, at least he could read Hebrew, not so well, but he could read Hebrew. And he makes Kiddush and he takes his cup and he's made in the middle of making Kiddush and he's holding. And then he says the, the bracha in the middle of Kiddush, right? You know, we say Barei Priya Gofen and then we continue Kiddush. He says Barei Priya Gofen, takes a sip and continues. Anyway, by that time, my sister and I just got the giggles. And it's a very bad thing for us girls, the two of us, to get the giggles. And then we actually said it was so sad, you know. 
like we had to make up some whatever I don't remember what we actually said but here we are like two grown women with our it was her also I think it was her fifth child and my whatever and we just like we actually just but it was such a sad thing because you recognize and then he put the glass down and everybody carries on and you just think to yourself where are we and then I said but he did it he could still read Hebrew he still knew that after we say and you drink okay so it's a very hard place but that's where we are and in, in our world today, part of the idea of our learning of our spheres, our Amir, is reminding us at all times to always bring people in. And it was actually quite a nice thing for me on the days where we had our fundraising, the thing both on Sunday and Monday, the sphere and the ideas behind it were very much connected to what you're doing. And we think that they, these dates and everything, we choose the dates. We always think, you know, you choose dates about things. And we don't. Hashem decides when those things are going to be coming in, when we're going to have these extras. And <clears throat> so we're coming up for Lagba Omer. I am hoping that I'm going to catch Rebetzin Hiller today to record something for us for Lagba Omer tomorrow. And I think that it's just important for each of us to remind ourselves that at the moment, since Pesach Sheini, the Zohar tells us that the illumination that comes down and joins us um, from the time of Yetzirah Sitzrayim is repeated. It ends after a month. And then Pesach Sheini, it, return, it gives us another week if we weren't there for Pesach Rishon at Pesach for the Korban. So I think that we should all try and remind ourselves that the, the illumination actually comes in, but it's only when you want it to be there. Okay, it's anything that we do that we want when we have the intent of something that we want to be there. Okay, so now we have to do a little bit of something that we call the mundane, which is always the hardest thing learning um, halacha. Halacha is just a hard thing to learn. <coughs> it's boring, it's dry, it's something that we have to do. So I can't learn it without adding something that makes us feel a little bit more connected to what we have to be doing first. Um, so yeah, I think that it really is an important place of because even if we're not always sure of doing the right, the wrong, whatever, it makes us more aware of asking the questions. Okay, it makes us more aware of asking the questions, and that's what is important. Okay, so um, I don't remember. Okay, let, let's go back. We'll start with the Allah Geffen. See, we just made Barakia Geffen, obviously for a reason, and we'll see what it means that the bracha of al Hagafen, and it does not make a difference whether you're making your, having your glass of wine um, on Shabbos, um, Kiddush morning, or um, during the week, if you sit down with a nice glass of wine, and the night we sat, uh, we, I learned with some ladies, uh, the, the halachas of Shabbos, you're doing this one, right? The, the van, just anything that you're not sure, I'm telling you now, you have to just put an X next to it, and we'll check the questions, okay? So, because there are some things that are a little bit are definitely stricter, but it's the halakha. Sometimes it's morning, but the, I learn things that I... That most like. times, oh, the Alison just did this for me now. My next thing I was going to say, more than things being stricter, very often it's more lenient because we learn things that we thought we couldn't do because we had never really learned it, so we just presume. And um, I think one of the hardest ones is taking headache tablets or, or medication. That, that's a hard one because that's the halakha. But... Hashem doesn't want you to be uncomfortable, but he, you know, we've got to remind ourselves of where it comes from. So she's always going to get it's more important. So if you're going to, if you're not feeling well enough to, if you need to lie down, you take a tablet. Even if your head and, or you know that you're going to get a migraine and it starts, then you have to take your tablets because it's preventative. Okay. So we've just got to learn. You ask a question at what stage, anybody who knows that they'll get a migraine has to take the medication as soon as it starts. You know, you know anybody that ever gets a cold sore, as soon as they feel one tingle, put on the put on the thing. And you wish you could put it on before the tingle, but if you feel one tiny little thing, just put on the medication. It's the same thing. If it's going to fester and get worse, okay. Those are the things that we need to do. So, alagafen, okay. The blessing of alagafen is required if one drinks at least. One reverse of grape juice within the time period that we have already discussed. Okay, we said that we have to drink it in a gulp. We leave with hot drinks and all the different things. 
So let me get to my picture of grape juice. Where's the Mm -hmm. I can not be here. <clears throat> All right, let's look at it differently. I think I'm actually getting a grant. Where does he have this? Okay, I'm gonna, Kazias, 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 Kazias. Where's the reviews? How come the reviews isn't in this book? Okay, we'll have to check. Okay, but we know that it was 80 something mils, a mouthful, when you have your mouthful drunk within that those minutes. Okay, so the um, um, Shatias Revius. So Kadei Shatias Revius is a measurement of time, the time it takes to actually drink the Revius. Okay, so our rabbis established that the normal manner of doing so is by drinking the Revius in no more than two sips and no more than one short pause between. So it would be like this if you want to watch for one second, you take your cup. whatever would fill your cheek and you drink that and then again and you do that that would be enough to need the after bracha okay so that was very well done now why well, have I doing very well yeah Okay, so the alagapin covers not only the wine, but all other beverages that we drank at that time, as we've spoken about before. For example, if you drank a reverse of grape juice and also an entire glass of cold drink, soda water, soda drinks, he may not make a separate barana for choice on the so on the drink. Okay, so if you make alham alagapin, that covers your any other drink that you have as well, okay? And your Burana Fashos would only cover food if you didn't wash, okay? So the, the Hagafen covers the, the um, that. Okay, Alha Aids is required if one eats at least a Kazayas of olive or dates or figs or pomegranates, okay? Those are the species of Eretz Yisrael. Then we will make the blessing of al ha -etz. The appropriate bracha after bracha for all other types of fruit, other than above, is Berena Fashois. However, if one ate a kazayas of olives, dates, grapes, etc., and also ate other fruit of the, of the tree, only one bracha achreina is, is thinked, okay? It's one of those things that I think that, yeah. So if you've had your platter of fruit, and you're only having fruit, okay? If you had fruit and a drink, then you would make Verena Fash choice on your drink if you didn't have wine. Okay? <laughs> so, um, if you had a table where you've had a piece of cake and grapes and pomegranates and maybe even olives, okay? So you have all those things. You would only make the ala mechiava ala eights. At the end, your normal thing is to say, 
brain of a choice, but you don't make it unless there's something else outside of the alamechia and the eights, you wouldn't make brain of a choice. So the only way you'd make brain of a choice if you have a glass of water or if you have a steak with your fruit, <laughs> you know, it is coming, uh, sorry, um, if you have a piece of fish or you have some tofu or we have some <laughs> other other um, yummy vegetarian um, are, are those, do you, um, Yolanda, do you know those uh, fries? Do you eat those kind of things? You know, the, the company fries, or they just... Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We use the, uh, the fake chicken strips and the fake beef On those chicken really strips, good. the chicken strips are my best. They're, they're really good. They're, they're better than, they actually, they're, honestly, Alison, in a stir fry, and then somebody showed me last night that they, they said you can actually buy... Um, is it soya? You can buy, I don't know, is it made from soy? It's, or uh, I think it's, it's wheat protein. Wheat protein. I think it's wheat protein. But literally, you can get rice, brown rice noodles, okay, with the stir fry and that, it's, it's like doing well on your health levels. Yeah, better than your piece of steak, which is injected with but it's yeah. <laughs> it's a challenge. <laughs> uh, anything, okay? So, um, if we're making Barana Fashais, okay, Barana Fashais is required if one eats a kazayat of any food other than any of the listed above, okay? And you have to be able to eat that food within the time of eating Kadeh Achilas Pras. If two half kazasim of different food, like half of an apple and half of candy, okay, sweets, are eaten within that time, then a barana fashois is still necessary. However, if half a kazais of food and half a reverse of drink, so you only have one sip of drink, and half an apple or a quarter of an apple. The truth is, is that your sizes are much are, are, are not, it's not, your, your size is not an apple. It's a part of an apple is a size. So half of that is quite a little. You, they're not consolidated, then the bracha is not said. You don't make an after bracha. So this is where the interesting part comes in. Where's, um, that when we're making after brachas, okay, it's actually, especially like a, a piece of um, banana, just the things that I've seen, the banana, um, lettuce, um, apples, where's the oh. pictures? I don't know what my book's hiding. Everything from me, I better say, Rabbi my balance nice and find out. Here we go. So when we think of the amount of food that we eat, okay, um, it's only a sixth of an apple, right, that needs a banana for shakes. Okay? So if you have one, like if you cut your apple and it's a small apple and you have, take a piece and eat it and then you leave the rest for later, you don't need to make an after bracha. It's only if, and that is one of the things that is most challenging for us in our lives. If, I know, I'm talking for myself, shouldn't talk for anybody else, but if I sat down and made my breakfast, your lunch and your supper, and when you have your snack, you sit and you eat it, everybody would know how to make their brachas and, and all the, and all the, the diet things would be dysfunct, deep, deep, like gone. <laughs> you wouldn't worry about it. Because the truth is, is that how we're actually supposed to eat, you know? And when we look at the amounts that you need, you know, the tea biscuits, the sweat, the, the um, sweat, you only need three of those petty burrs, you know, these ones, to make an after bracha. You only need three, you know? As far as rogalach go, Okay, you don't even need a whole rogalach because it's intense dough. There's a lot of dough in the rogalach. So your, your rogalach, you only need 14 grams, which is usually around three quarters of a rogalach. Okay, it's really not a lot of stuff that we need to be making brachas on. Two wafers need, a, need an alamachia. Just two wafers. 
okay so we see all these things okay and certainly even with um with with chocolates and the barana fashais you know there, there are coffee beans okay it's quite a lot you need like 30 coffee beans um i don't know if anybody likes those candy corns you know those candy corns they used to be those yummy things that i used to they taste a little bit marzipan -ish. when i used to get them from america they were like oh my gosh heaven i don't think i could even eat them now but um, you really, you need 26 of those, but those are like quite small, but a piece of um, fruit roll and um, the chocolate lentils, like the dread, those are quite a lot. You need a lot to make, but a chocolate mint, um, the chocolate mints, I'm surprised they haven't got a picture of an after eight here. Okay. Um, jellyfish, you really only need six. Um, the pieces of licorice, you know, the, the medium sizes, you actually need three and a half, no, four and a half, but the longer ones, you need three and a half, which is quite a lot. Um, can you stop at three? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you can stop at three, then because it's, hey, it's definitely a good thing. You know, there, there are lots of the little things that we have to see. When it comes to crackers, it's much more, um, much more complicated because it's actually... You, you, you should actually, when you're making um, your mazonas, um, you know those flat breads, the, all the seasoned flat breads? So how many do you think of those do you need to make an afterbracha? You only need like and less than two, less than two. Now, some people can sit and have less than two. I really don't think, I'd always have two, okay? A breadstick, if you have one breadstick, you're fine. But even fruit and vegetables, you'd be amazed at how little you actually need to eat. A banana is really half a banana needs a banana for choice. Okay. So all these things are just important for us to know. If you have a date, a dry date, okay, dry dates, okay, pit a dry date. That means a dry date, five dried dates. Good morning. Five dry dates are... Um, is an afterbracha, okay? So we'll make an alha eights as soon as you've had five dried, but the very big ones, you need less. It's a normal size eight, but the big ones. If you're sitting and having your grapes, how many times do we sit and just pick up the grapes and do the things and pick off the grapes? So we pick up the grapes and you need small grapes, only 13. If you can imagine those yummy new fresh um, they've got the, does anybody have the candy floss grapes? So you only need four or five of those to make an afterbracha. They're quite big or any large grape needs about four or five. Okay. So that's really where we, um, that's really where we are with understanding in just knowing where we make the brachas. So we have to see that, um, when we have the two different types, again, it is always a good idea to be able to say, you know, like sit down, give yourself an amount, and then you don't have to worry whether you've made your brachas or not. Okay, so you know, you sit down, this is how many I need. You know, one pickle, you know, like it's a normal size, like the, if you take like a normal pickle from the tins, not the mini ones, the smaller ones, you'd probably need two. But you just need literally one large pickle and it, it's and you need to a third of a large pickle okay and one normal size pickle you need to make an afterbracha okay um olives olives the small olives are about 15 and the large olives we only need three large olives to make the bracha of it's, it's just really not a lot. You don't even need a whole plum to make a brain of fresh ice. Okay. So it's quite a, quite a daunting, um, quite a daunting thing, but it's becoming a way. And I think that that really is the, the thing with us learning all these brachas. I actually can't believe like we've done very well. So Alison, look where we're up to. And we've still got plenty to go, but we've done very well in, in getting through our brachas. So, the Borena Fashais is required if one drinks a revise of any beverage other than wine or grape juice. So this will be enough coffee <laughs> to keep me going. But 
what I'll usually do is leave that amount of coffee at the bottom. And if I'm not going to have another cup of coffee, remember we said if we can have a cup of coffee or we start our coffee and we transfer our coffee and we take it with us, that same bracha holds for that cup until you finish it. Okay. And if you're in a place that if you take your coffee mug with you, your travel mug, you don't have to make a new bracha until you finish. And you only will make an after bracha if you drink that last bit at once. So you've got your proper revise in order to make a bracha. Okay? I haven't made a first bracha. Baruch atah Adonai lehenu melech ha'elam she'achol nebed barach. Okay. So the brain of our choice is required. If we drink a revise of any beverage other than wine or grape juice, provided that a revise was consumed within that minimum time period, then we will make an after bracha. If two half revises of different beverages, half a revise of an orange juice and half of soda are consumed within the minute time period discussed, a bracha achreina is needed. Okay, it is needed. So a barena fashais is required if one drinks a revise of water, providing that the water was drunk to quench his thirst. If water is consumed for purposes other than to quench his thirst, a bracha achreina is required. Okay. Okay, so here we go, and we said that a Barana Pashos is quiet if one drinks a reverse of water, providing that the water was drunk to quench his thirst. If water is consumed for purposes other than quench the thirst, then you don't need a bracha. So if you're taking your water in order to take a tablet or something, you don't have to make your bracha, okay? If a person is not sure if he ate an amount of food which would require the bracha chreina, in order to remove his doubt, he wants to drink a revise or more of water so that he can make that bracha chreina. Since the water is not being taken to quench his thirst, okay, neither a shakol nor the barena nefashois are made, okay? So that won't help him at all. Now, we'll spend a little bit of a few minutes talking about um, the ikar and the topple, and then we will finish off with a nice idea from Rabbi Twersky. And then next week, we're on to the bread, okay? Which is, okay. Um, I'm also going to get a beautiful thing that I've been reading um, on bread and also on the brachas and benching and whatever, and also learning there's um, um, how to actually... We're going to make something of getting people to teach them to wash their hands properly, okay? I actually haven't really noticed it this year because there are not that many people in and out of the house this year, but there's certain times, other times when I notice, um, <laughs> I thought so, Dina, you're welcome to join us tomorrow. Um, you're welcome to stay with us with pleasure and learn brochas, but tomorrow at 10 o'clock is Rabbits and Silver. It's always Thursday morning on this link. Okay, but today you're welcome to stay with us and we're doing brachas. We've been doing it for a few months. You're welcome to join us anytime. Okay, so we have learned that um, when one food item is subordinate to another, whether in a mixture or a combination or individually, the bracha on the primary, which is the ikar, exempts the subordinate the top. Okay, so we're going to make a bracha on what was important. The most important part is the ikar, okay, and the second is the tofel. Just as a bracha rishayna, the initial bracha, the first bracha on the ikar, on the important part, covers the tofel, so too does the after bracha of the important cover the tofel, i.e. your brachas on the fruits, of Eretz Yisrael will cover all fruit. Your al 
will cover your other foods. Your your wine, your a la gaffin will cover your cup of coffee after you've had your glass of wine, okay? Like that sort of thing. So um, that really, if you think about it, if we all would just have them three meals a day, wash, have a piece of bread enough to bench, make for a priya gaffin at night <laughs> with your dinner, okay, and then bench, None of us would have really any problems, okay? Including with sitting down with a plate of fruit and knowing what the brachas are going to be that we're going to have. Um, unfortunately, we spend lives on the run. Bread becomes mazonas. I have to tell you, I made my sourdough bread and I made this, I made, um, I made it mazonas because I used half beer and half um, water. That's what my friend taught me to use half the water of beer and half um, water, and that would make it mazonas. But you can have very little until you have to bench. <laughs> so your piece of bread is so small, so it's good. But I, I decided stop snacking on anything, okay? Don't snack on anything that you shouldn't be having, okay? So... Sourdough is still eights, yeah? Sourdough bread is hamoitzi, hamoitzi. Why would sourdough bread be her eights? No, no, sorry, not eights. I meant her mozzi. Yes, okay. I thought you were meant that. Oh, sorry, yeah. Okay, that's okay. Sourdough is definitely her mozzi, but it's like any bread that if you mix in grape juice or orange juice or apple juice or a juice instead of water, if you put fruit juice instead of water, so, um, so there's an amount that you can change. So I could put apple juice into my sourdough, Okay, and that makes it mazonas, the mazonas crackers. You've just got to make sure that the right amount of your liquid is um, changes to a different consistent, to a different, um, not water. Water is what makes, water and the flour is what makes the bread. But then I did decide and said, that's it. Blinero, you know, even mazonas bread and things, we've just got to stop being lazy about having mazonas. You know, if you're going to have bread, have bread. Let's have bread. Let's thank Hashem for the ability to be able to say, and that is part of our... So we have to remember, bring yourself in. Don't make yourself impure or distant from anyone. Let others into your heart. Okay, now, this is Yom Tov Shein, um, Pesach Sheini. Concentrate, eat matzah. Okay, so I'm going to say, we, this was on Yom Tov Shaini, but I wanted just to learn this this concept, what he says, concentrate on the kindness implicit in the bracha that hamaitzi lechem min ha'aretz. For 40 years, the Jews wandered in the desert and Hashem sustained them with manna, which fell from the sky. Once they entered the land of Israel, the generation who had been born in the desert was amazed to find that food can come from the ground. It comes from the ground. The farmer simply throws seeds into the earth and Hashem turns it into food a few months later. We know that the process is not as simple as that, but one of the beautiful things about bread and benching is that when you go through and you look at the brachas, and we're going to do this as part of our bracha thing because I think it's so important to know the blessings that come from bread, right? Look at all the beautiful blessings that comes from bread. So Rebetz and Kanievsky, when I uh, took a group of our ladies there, um, when a girl was asked her for a bracha for her husband to have parnasa, she told her, start saying benching. When you bench and say, Amazon, I want you to read every single word from a sitter or a bench. We don't just, blah, 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 blah. you know, why do people, people are scared of benching. Oh my gosh, it's a Mazonas. But it became a very American thing because people did things on the run. We don't take our time to make a meal, right? You know, my children are laughing, you know, they say, well, Emma, if you're going to really do your diet properly, you have to make time to make the meal. You need somebody to make your food for you. I said, yeah, but you've also got to sit down and eat it. So you've got to be at the place and eat. Okay, not breakfast, lunch and supper in four hours. Okay, and from mid till till midnight and then you get hungry so you start your day so the idea is that when we wash and when we bench then we take our things and we say look at Hashem gave us we put the seeds in 
the rain and everything happens. Then we've got to go and harvest. And then we've got to change the, the wheat into flour. And then we're going to grind it. And then we get the flour. And then we put in the, the, the this and we get in the ingredients. So where do you think yeast? Yeast is a new thing. They didn't have yeast in the desert. Okay, so the same way these things, and that really is probably a reason that even sourdough, sourdough you grow from your flour and water, and you feed it. You know, you've got to add to your to your starter. You've got to feed it, so you make it grow more. Okay, and it's not so complicated if somebody gives you your feeder. My friend gives me my my starter. I mean, my starter. I've just got to feed it, but when you make it, it's like amazing. You see this bread that comes out and it is just incredible. And it really tastes. It's got a totally, it's just great. Okay. You, maybe we should go one day and let Charlotte give us a class on how she does her sourdough. We'll ask her if she can do that for us. So, and don't worry, I'll tell her she won't be out of business from any of us. <laughs> okay, I make 10, 10 baguettes and, and, you know, it's gone, really. And everybody, like Shabbos, they eat the sourdough even before they have the machalas. Yeah. Zevi has to have brown challah. Zevi has his, his six-seeded brown. He doesn't like white challah so much anymore. He eats a whole challah with his hummus. Sometimes that will be his meal, but that's how we are. Okay. So, so ikar and toffel. To illustrate the appropriate bracha for the ikar component of the combination is borena pashais. The bracha, the after bracha will exempt all other components as well. If, for example, a fruit cocktail, add it to a cocktail, <laughs> okay, a fruit cocktail mixtures have grapes, for which the bracha is al ha eats, if you have enough, okay, and they're not the majority of the ingredients, since the other fruits are the ikar, are the main ingredient, the appropriate bracha will be barena fashais, okay, and that will cover your grape as well. Okay, however, if you choose to see that you love your grapes and you have a bowl of a fruit cocktail in whatever, and there are enough grapes that you go to make an after broccoli, you'd probably pick out your grape first to have it. Okay, but if you're eating it as a cocktail and your grapes are cut up into the fruit salad, fruit cocktail, whatever, and you're eating the other fruits, you make a barana fashos because it is not the ikar, the main thing of that. If you have, it's like having a melon boat. Okay, with grapes, one or two grapes on it. That's not your ikka, that's the tuffle. Okay, and there won't be enough grapes to make an ala eights. If there are, then you can make that because it's totally separate. So you would take your um, grapes and eat them, make the broth on the grape first. It's not cut up into a fruit cocktail, it's on. But then you've got an adama. So it doesn't cover that, okay? So there we go. Okay, I must double check that, maybe it does. But I don't know. Okay, I'll double check that, okay. Okay, then, okay, so what now? So com combinations that have mazonas in it. We have learned that if a mixture contains a mazonot, a mazonas ingredient, the appropriate brocha, first brocha for the mixture is Boire mine mazonas or bore mine or not. When determining the correct bracha for the mixture containing the mazonas or the mazonot, an additional factor must be taken into the consideration. Whether it, whether or not a kazais of mazonas ingredients will be eaten within the kade achilles pras, or if enough mazonas is present in the combination. So that a kazais of mazonas, okay, so that you've got enough mazonot or mazonas ingredients is eaten within that time. And I'm going to tell you, it's like eating, it's like eating a bridge roll. And I'm only thinking about this now because <laughs> I've got to go and I'm going to visit somebody tomorrow, one of our donors and somebody who um, I have a good relationship with and she's, she's not, not been so well. Anyway, now finally with COVID over, we could make time to go and visit. And my friend and I said, we'll bring salads. Because um, somebody from the office, we're going to go together. And so I said, we'll bring take it. So she, no, she's entertaining us. She's ordering in. She's kosher at home, but she wouldn't have her help that's at home making for us. So she's ordering in bridge rolls. Okay. So <laughs> fine, we'll have bridge rolls. So I'm thinking to myself already now, you know, like, hmm, okay. 
And you can't even have too many bread rolls. We can't make that lunch. It's got to be our snack if we're having bread rolls. If it's our lunch, we actually should wash. Because if you have four halves of bread rolls, it's enough to bench. Okay? Four halves of bread rolls is enough to bench. And one of the fascinating things that I learned through one of something that I'd set someone up to learn with in, um, in seed many, many, many years ago. Oh my gosh, a long time ago. So it must have been JLE learning, but the person learned in seed and JLE now that I'm thinking of the whole story. Yeah. And what we did, oh, so I said, so she goes to this lady's house and the woman serves bagels. She said, so the person that was learning said, I'm going to wash. Where can I wash? So she said, well, you don't need to wash. You know, it's kind of like, I'm not sure if that is or not, but it's not Shabbos. All right. So the person used to have bagels in the week without washing. And this person comes and she says, this is the lady I'm learning with. What, da, 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 da. what does she know? Anyway, it was very funny. So I finally said, actually, in their family, right? But it was because they used to buy Mazonas bagels, but she didn't always differentiate. But my friend taught this. So this woman then calls me. She says, I'm so embarrassed. I can't believe it. I'm teaching her. And you know what? I'm learning more from teaching her than what I'm actually teaching. And she says, I've never thought about it. It wasn't Shabbos. And I was, I was actually horrified. But she said from then on, that was it. So it's an amazing thing because we become, we don't even realize how you just let go of things. And it's quite interesting because these are things that we can correct in ourselves um, at any time. And that's why when we watch so many people who have wash for bread at all times, but actually they're not even washing their hands correctly. They're not saying the bracha correctly. They're not eating enough at the beginning of their meal correctly. And they are sometimes even benching without eating enough um, <coughs> bread. And not only that, it has made your bracha for washing hands is a bracha levatala. You're making your whole benching bracha levatala. So actually, it would have been better to wash your hands with no bracha, have your hamoitzi, and then no after bracha. Okay, but you've got to know how much you can eat in order not to. If you have more than two slices of pizza, even if it's Mazonas pizza, you have to have watched to bench. So if you eat more than two pieces of pizza, you then bench, even if you didn't wash before. Yeah, even if you didn't wash before, we will then bench. But we're going to learn all these things. It's amazing. There is so much. And it just gives us such opportunity in such little ways to do something right. Um, we've been learning mukta. And it's, it's incredible. It's incredible. But somebody, she said to me, she says, you know, she's keeping, she doesn't, her family don't keep Shabbos. She's the only one at home that keeps Shabbos, the mother of the house. And she's the only recent. So she said what she's learning is how many things she can keep Shabbos with without really even doing anything different, just acknowledging and not touching and not moving and covering. And she was incredible. Like even in her kitchen, when she's doing things, she's like, oh, I'm, I'm keeping Shabbos better because I'm cutting my fruit, my vegetables a bit bigger. You know, like little things that we learn, they just change everything about where we are. There's a young woman who's just gone on Aliyah and she's actually asked me to, if I could sit with her for a few hours, we'll do half hour things at a time, just because she's realized that her headspace of Shabbos is not a preparation space. And she wants to do more about Shabbos, right? And that's such an incredible thing. She's been through the from schools. She's been to SEM. And now she's a couple of years down the line where she's had to do things by herself and she's reintegrating <coughs> everything. So we're becoming more connected to Shabbos. So your Shabbos connects you more, right? So all any tiny little thing that we do and that we learn actually takes us closer to um, Hashem and makes us more aware of the things that we need to do, okay? And that's where we're at. So an average person eating an, at a normal pace consumes around six Kazasim, okay, six measurements within three minutes. Okay, that's quite a lot. Okay, so if, <laughs> so we have to watch all those things and see what we actually eat. And that is what we would call, therefore, a particular mixture were to contain one Kazais of Mazonas and five 
kazaisim of other foods, if one were eating at a normal pace, the kazais of mazoyanus would be eaten within three minutes. And I can tell you one thing is for sure that I am able to do that very easily. And the example is when you have a, when a noodle cabbage, a mixture is eaten at a normal pace, more than a kazais of noodles will be consumed within three minutes. And therefore we make al hamachia. Any kugel that's noodle kugel, not potato kugel, but like a noodle pasta kugel. If there's only a small amount of noodles within that cabbage, or one eats most of the cabbage, just very little noodles. Since the other case of the kazais of mazoinus will not be eaten in that amount of time, then you will not say al hamachia, but we will say Okay, I'm going to end with a lovely idea from Rabbi Tversky's wisdom each day and listen to this because it's a beautiful thing to try and keep and do. So um, brought down somewhere that one does not open the portals in a dark house in order to see its defects. Okay, so the Torah tells us that there can be a malignant lesion in the stone walls of the house. We're talking about saras, okay? But somebody spoke in Lashon Hara, and we have to call the Kohanim in. If a person sees a defect in the walls, he consults the Kohen, okay? Who comes to inspect the defects and decides whether it is benign or malignant. If the latter, the affected stones are removed, then the Mishnah tells us that if the house is in dark and the Kohen cannot properly see the lesion, okay, he cannot properly examine the defect, one should not bring added light. So if he can't see it and he's looking, don't have to bring it, it's dark outside, you don't have to come and bring an extra torch or something to go look carefully. The defect may remain undiagnosed. Incredible, no? In addition to its manifest halachic meanings, the Mishnah has an ethical message. Do not, do not, do not search in other people for a defect. If we notice a fault in others, we should try and in a gentle, considerate way to apprise him and help them overcome their faults. We should make every attempt to judge the other person favorably and interpret even the, um, their improper behavior in a soft manner, in the softest manner possible. And that's from Pekavot. In no way should we make a concerted effort to seek the other person's defects. Unfortunately, the reverse is true. We may tend to look for other people's weaknesses as Rabbi Tversky wrote in Life's Too Short, this may be a way in which a person who suffers from so low self-esteem may try to burst, sorry, may try to boost his sagging self-appraisal. If he can find faults in others, this enables him to feel better than the other person. There's a Hasidic aphorism, examine yourself, not others. And Rabbi Tversky says, in recovery from alco alcoholism, a person should take a fearless personal inventory. He is instructed, Take your own inventory, not others. And the Torah tells us how to manage a defect in a structure. And the Talmud tells us not to make a concerted effort to scrutinize it. And the ethicist will tell us that we should apply the halacha to our own personal behavior. As I heard last week, such a beautiful thing. You know, we say, done the cups of chus. And done the cups of chus is not the first thing to do. Dan the Khafsa Khus is only secondary to give the benefit of the doubt. Dan the Khafsa Khus, we give the person the benefit of the doubt. But it's not about the benefit of the doubt. It's not judging in the first place. Okay? Make a beautiful day, everybody. Lovely to see you. And Dina, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow again at 10, 12 p.m. Where are you in Israel, I'm presuming? Great. So 12 p.m. your time and 10 p.m. our time. And thank you for joining us. Okay. Are you, you're on mute, so I can't hear you.
Hi, sorry. Thank you so much. I really miss learning halacha. I haven't learned halacha in so long. And Welcome just... to join us Wednesday mornings. We start 9.30 to 10.30. That's 11.30 to 12.30 your time. We're here. Uh, okay. I was like, wait a minute. Okay. It's not that early here. Okay. okay. <laughs> 11.30 good. to 12.30. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good. Pleasure. Okay. Have a good day, everybody. You too. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.